Hello everyone, my name is Ang, and today I want to present the paper titled Fully Understanding Generic Object Modeling, Segmentation and Reconstruction. So this is a paper written by a group of authors from Michigan State University. And the basic idea of this paper is that they want to reconstruct 3D model from one single input image. So let's go into the detail of the paper. So first, let's make a brief introduction about a topic that uh, we, are, we are working on about object modeling. So object modeling meaning that we want to infer 3D structural, structures of the objects from image. And this is one of the old and fundamental problem in computer vision because it has many applications in robotic and augmented, augmented reality. Uh, in robotic, the robot agent needs to map the surrounding environment and the object it will interact with into 3D model because 3D model will have the object to interact with the, uh, with the object. For example, the robot can grab the object, push the object, etc. For augmented reality, um, we want to overlay a um, augmented layer over the physical layer of the object as we show in the figure below that for example we want to add some object on the ground by doing this we need to know the 3d shape of the ground for example so let's talk about the background how we can construct 3d model from image there are three main approaches for this um, first we can reconstruct 3d model by using one single camera and capture multiple up picture of a given object at various angle. For example, this image here show how we rotate the camera surrounding a car in order to reconstruct the 3D model of a car. The second approach, we can use stereoscopic cameras. These are camera with two lens. And based on the discrepancy between the two images from two different lenses and the distance between the two lenses, we can, can reconstruct the depth information of the objects. The third one is the most difficult one is that we are given an image showing a position of the object. And that image usually called the pers perspective projection. We want to reconstruct the 3D uh, position as well as 3D structures of the object. Like here, we have a picture of two or three balls, and we want to reconstruct the shape of the ball and where it is in space. So in this paper, we focus on the third approach is to construct 3D structure from the perspective projection. Now, in order to do that, in the past, they used various methods, but with the rise of deep learning, this is a more favorable method because of the power of deep learning. It can, it can learn, as we know, it can learn very complex structure, very com complex pattern, which is, this is the most powerful approach that we have so far. But deep learning relied heavily on label data. It means that all the data it learned must be manually annotated in some way that reflect the 3D structure of the object. So there is two ways to, to label the data. We can use synthetic data or we can use self-supervised method. Synthetic data means that we construct 3D model using some specialized software and but by having the 3D model, we can learn the perspective uh, projection and the 3D ground to, to have the model learn the 3D structure of 
various objects. However, even if we use a software, creating the model, 3D model, it is very labor intensive. In addition, if we learn on virtual object and try to detect image capturing the real world situation, the performance will be reduced due to the domain gap. Then recently people think about self-supervised methods. This is a method that try to train the model without directly learn using the 3D ground truth. Instead, they use the secondary ground truth from other tasks, for example, like object segmentation, object detection, object classification. They use those ground truths because those ground truth is easier to obtain. And if somehow we can use this ground truth, it will be much cheaper to train the 3D model. So here, let's discuss about the most related work that related to this paper. Um, recently, they are, they, about the self-supervised method, I already discussed in the previous slides. So basically, they try to use something like um, object, bounding box, object segmentation. And then there are two new uh, related work from New and Neil Mayer, um, they propose an end-to-end -end learning framework that can train a deep learning model using the self-supervised method. So what is new about those related work is that they propose to use a differential renderer, the green component here. So here is what they propose. Uh, first, we have a DCNN that will receive an input image and the model will try to reconstruct the 3D object and represent it in some 3D representation. So now the differential renderer will transform the 3D representation into a render image and they will compare the render image with the input image. By doing this, they can have a loss function. And by since we have a loss function, now we can train the model in an end-to-end -end manner. So this, this is the, the, the whole idea of the end-to-end -end framework. So now um, let's discuss the, the motivation for this paper. So the author argued that all private works, they only work on a certain category. For example, they build a model just to work for a car, a model work for a cylinder, a model work for a bottle, etc. So um, this could be cumbersome because we need a model for an object and there is no there is no single universal model for all categories. The second one is that on previous works, they relied on texture 3D representation. So texture 3D representation basically show the shape of the object in 3D space. However, they also argue that there is a need to include other features to improve the model performance. So here is what the author wants to propose. They also want to propose a new approach to better learn 3D models. The models ideally should be a one single model that can learn on multiple objects, categories. Second one is that the model should be able to utilize more useful information from a single image. Like the model should be able to derive information about category, shape, lining, camera projection, etc. in addition to the texture information in order to reconstruct the 3D model. So what will be the benefit of uh, doing this? First is that because they use self-supervised, like the previous works, 
they will be able to use the unlabeled real world image and in addition they will improve the 3d reconstruction quality because they use additional features third one is that they will enhance the representation power of the model because they they can learn on multiple object categories by just using a single model so their model is able to learn much much more than previous one so um, let's discuss about formally about their problem so their problem can be represented as a minimization optimization problem so they want to minimize the differences between a ground truth image ii and the estimated 2D image I had I for all I in the in the testing set. So here we, we, we have I is a input 2D image, for example, image containing a car and running, and I had is the reconstructing image of the car after we have the 3D model. So here we have R, here is uh, rec the rendering, differential rendering that it will reconstructing the estimated image from the 3D model DS, the albedo information DA, lightning information L, and camera projection P. So uh, they also have some several terms like FC, FS, and FA. Here are the features extracted directly from input image and FC, FS, and FA are unsupervised features, extraction function. Now, let's talk about the overall system that they propose. So overall, we, we can see here is that they have um, three components. They have some kind of feature extraction epsilon here. They have a model learning DS and DA. They have a differential rendering layer, which will convert a 3D model into a 2D image. And the model will receive some input image here, like several real world image. And the model will try to output the target object in 2D image. So back to about the point about end-to-end -end learning, they want to compare this image of the car here with the 2D image of the object after they reconstructing 3D model. And by doing comparing these two figures together, they can derive a loss function for end-to-end -end learning as we discussed before. And here for the feature extraction epsilon, it will perform directly on the image and they will derive various information like light level, uh, projection, camera projection, um, FS, FC, and FA are uh, three additional fee features. And then in the modeling is where the training happen. In modeling, they will have the DS will uh, use some information like from FS and FC to reconstruct the 3D model of a car. And for DA, they will use information from FS, FC, and FA to reconstructing the color information of a car. It's called Abido. Basically, it's a color information. Now, in the rendering layer, again, they, they will combine the 3D modeling information and color information to, to generate the final image patching here. So th that is the overall the flow of the, the system. So now let's discuss in the detail of their contribution. So contribution number one is their uh, decoder. More in particular, their shape decoder and albedo decoder. Again, shape decoder will generate a 3D model and albedo decoder will generate the color of the target object. So for the shape decoder, they will use some information about the class ID of the object, FC, the shape ID of the object called FS, 
and I pawn into this space and its output is it will predict a probability of this 3D pawn what is the probability that it is a solid pawn belong to the object so by doing this they will map all the pawn in 3D space into a uh, somehow representing the, 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 the solid shape of the target object and they argue that by adding the class information here as a prior information, it will allow the model to learn our multiple class, which is one of the novelty that they uh, represent in the uh, previous slides. About the FS is a shape code because the model can only work on some fixed uh, shape category, like they can only work for car, they can all work for bottle, so FS here is some the code indicating some standard shape, like a shape of a standard car, shape of the standard model. And by doing this, they will help the model to easily morphing the standard shape into the specific 3D shape that belong to the input image. Now let's talk about the Abido encoder, similar to the, the shape decoder. The, this Albedo decoder, they will also use the class information, the class ID, the shape ID, and they also use the they also use the Albedo ID, which is basically a feature extracting directly from the image. And similar to the shape decoder, they will try to can transform a point in three D space into a color code for that point. So they will output multiple versions, multiple color code from C1 to CK, and they will pick the, the best color code that uh, match, that is uh, work best for this input point. And then they will have a function to combine both the shape, the, the shape probability, occupancy probability, and the color code into a final uh, result. Now the third part of their contribution is the branching structure. As you can see here for the shape decoder, the output is a multiple branch from 1 to k. And for each branch, they will capture a specific part of the target object. For the albedo decoder, they also output several branch from 1 to k. And here for each branch, they will capture a version the color version of a target object. So they, their argument is that by using brands, they, they can encode the subject into simple part or simple version of the color, allowing uh, the learning to be more efficient. Um, that is their, their argument. So um, let's talk about second contribution is the rendering layer, which is basically the differential renderer that we previously we talked about. The, t the goal of the rendering layer is convert 3D shape and the albedo information back to the 2D image, allowing the model to learn and in an end-to-end -end manner. So one thing to note here is that all of the operation in the rendering layer is differentiable. Differentiable is essential because it allows the deep learning model to do backward propagation, which is an important step in the deep learning. So without differentiable, there will be no learning. And again, there will be four factors that play in here, including lightning, the camera projection, um, the, the albedo, and the shape of, of, of the object. Then we talk about the third contribution of their paper is they propose a, a training framework to train their model. So their training will include uh, two main steps. For the first step, they want to train uh, their their, their DS and DA with a 3D model from CAD, from CAD software, 
because by doing trend directly on the 3D model with 3D ground truth, the, these two decoder components can work reliably. And after they finish this supervised training, they will fix the parameter of the decoder DS and DA. And then now they will train the whole framework. And their contribution is that they propose a loss function that combining four loss factor, uh, image loss, silhouette flaw loss, local feature consistency loss, and regularization loss. And by, by combining all the four loss together, the, the goal is that they try to improve the accuracy of their model. Now, we already talked about their design then, and their contribution. Now, let's talk about the way they evaluate their model. First, let's talk about experiment. So, in the experiment, they, they, the data they choose is from two different sources. For supervised training, to train the decoder, they use the ShapeNet Core V1, which is a data set of 3D annotated 3D models with 3D ground truth and there will be 13 classes um, which is 13 categories and they use for second sort of the data they use the Pascal 3D which is the 2D um, the 2D image data set and they choose five categories from Pascal 3Ds mm that overlap with the categories for, from ShapeNet V1. And the ground truth for Pascal 3D is object segmentation, which basically indicate the uh, occupants of the object in the input image. So in the reconst reconstruction metric is used to evaluate the performance of the 3D reconstructor. And they use uh, two metrics. Here is F score and the charm for L1 distance. Now, let's talk about their evaluation result. First is the illustration. So, here they uh, illustrate their result on three different data sets. Uh, the first one is the, the ability to reconstruct 3D model on the ShapeNet V1, which contain five object categories that they basically are 3D models. For second one, they evaluate on the Pascal 3D and the third group is from the Pixel 3D data set. And we can, we see here in the colorful column here is the, the, the model that they reconstructed. Um, using their proposed approach. And we can say that, well, um, they show that their, the shape of the reconstructed 3D model is very closely resemblance to the crowd through object. It's the same here for the Pascal 3D and Pixel 3D data sets. The difference between the two groups on the left is that the image are capturing from capture from the real world, while here is a 3D model. Now, next one is that they want to evaluate the um, feature extraction procedure because recalling that they use unsupervised feature extraction to extract the lightning and um, class ID, shape ID, etc. So their point is that they want to show their feature extraction is efficient. This means that the feature extracted are clearly separated from other. Here they use TSNE to project the data into 2D image. And you can we can see here that the data is clearly grouped into different classes. So each block here belongs showing the data belong to a certain group like the cyan color showing the cap for example so by doing this they show that their feature extraction procedure is efficient and also for the shape it is not as good as the 
um, the, the albedo and the class. Finally, in the two row below, they show the uh, quality of the 3D shape that they reconstructed using the, the extracted feature. So here they are displaying the best result. And we can see here is that um, the reconstructed shape is quite close to the ground truth. Now, after that, um, we talk about the uh, um, numerical uh, quantitative evaluation. Here, the, the point of the author is that their model performed best on two different metrics. They used the chamfer L1 distance and the F score. And for each row here is each object that they have in their data set. And they use several competitor model like 3D, R2, N2, PSG, etc. And their proposed model is in this column. So we see that for the chamfer L1 distance, a lot of entry here, many objects, they obtain the highest score, which show in the red. And for several other, they obtain the blue, which is the second best. And they have the, the, the most number of bad and second best in their result. Similarly, for F score, they have a lot of uh, entry that have the second best, although they have uh, quite a few bad results in these three object category. But overall, they, they have the most colorful uh, data in this column. So let's talk about the paper strength and weakness. So the strength of the paper clearly come from their novelty is that they use additional information like lightning or beetle to improving the uh, to the image reconstruction from 3D. And by doing during this, during the training, as a result is that their 3D model is reconstructed with highest quality compared with the other competitor. However, um, there are several weakness in the paper. First one is that they use unsupervised feature extraction. Well, even though they use a very uh, promising result in the evaluation, basically feature extraction, unsupervised method cannot handle a wide range of the data. So we are not sure if there are a lot, there are a lot more data, there are a lot more category, we, we are not sure how this unsupervised model will perform. Second one is that they can only work on a small set of object category. This is because, as we can see in the evaluation, they only evaluate the model on a very small set of, of object, about five to eight object categories. The third one is that they use semi-training, which lack of 3D ground truth. So this is both their strength and their weakness because they, they use um, derived uh, secondary ground to information. It can never achieve the best result compared with the model that can learn from the genuine authentic 3D ground truth. And finally, because they use relies on albedo and lightning for 3D cues, it might not be reliable because there are some objects that does not reflect the light uh, uniformly. Uh, for example, like the, the, front, uh, the front windshield of the car, the albedo and lighting condition will change a lot, which will make misleading the model in the training phase. So based on this weakness, uh, we want to talk a little bit about our project ideas. So previous method, they use secondary ground truth, uh, ground truth from other annotation like object detection and segmentation. So I ask why they use semi-supervised. So probably one of the reason is that because the 3D ground truth, especially 3D ground truth from the depth information provided by 3D camera is not available. As we know that the stereoscopic camera for traditional 2D image is not that necessary. 
especially when the user view the image on the phone or on the computer. There actually no need for 3D information, for depth information here. The second one is that the camera has a very small field of view. So basically, when, when we want to capture the object at different perspective, typically the camera has to move. Uh, and because the field of view cannot capture all the object, uh, simply when the object moving out of the field of view, the camera has to rotate or move to capture those objects especially the moving object and th this one will also complicating the annotation process because we, we have to calculate how much the camera move to the new position so VR have the advantage compared with this uh, traditional video because in VR the camera should have should be the stereoscopic camera because by doing by, by providing stereoscopic it will give the depth information and the depth information is also critical to provide the immersive experience so i would expect that in the future many camera will will pro, will be a stereoscope 360 degree camera and that will lead to the availability of a large amount of the the video that can provide depth information so it means that naturally we will have in future a very large amount of the ground truth video that can provide uh, a better way to train the 3d reconstructing model the second one is that the omnidirectional property of the camera that the camera can be static it can stand still while still capturing an object moving around so we don't need to change the camera update the camera position but actually we need to track the object position and perspective and it also allows us to continuously tracking the object and getting the depth information of that object so i'm thinking is that it will provide a much easier way to to get different perspective of a single object over time which in turn allow us to train to create a 3d model and train it much easier and more efficient more accuracy than uh, the traditional 2d approach here so here is our initial project idea is it to uh, 3d modeling of the object via depth estimation um, using the 360 stereoscopic um, cameras. So that's it for my presentation. Um, thank you for 